Hello, grade 11, how are you? I hope you're doing fine. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to explain a little bit better about Newton's law, and I'm going to focus just on the first law today, okay? In the next lessons, I'm going to focus on the second and the third. Okay, remember we discussed this in class, what's the first law or the law of initia? What does this stand for? So this first law states that in the absence of a resultant external force acting upon a body, a body will remain, remain at rest or in uniform rectilinear motion. It means it will not have acceleration, so acceleration will be zero. It means if your eye not moving, you continue not moving until someone push you, until an external force makes you move. Okay, and if you are in movement, you continue moving unless something stops you. Okay, so this is basically what the first law states. Okay, if I have two forces that are balanced, remember two forces that have the same intensity on both on opposite side. I have two options. The object can stay at rest. It means the velocity will be zero. I am not moving at all. Or the object is in motion with velocity different of zero. But in this motion, I'm going to have all the same velocity. Okay. If I have object at rest, it means I have no acceleration at all. So my acceleration is zero. But if I'm in motion, I can also have acceleration zero. When? Because when my velocity is constant. So if I'm driving a car at 100 km per hour and I didn't uh, change, for example, you put in cruise control, okay? So you are in a straight road, you put in cruise, co cruise control, it's gonna keep the 100 km per hour. It means I'm not accelerating at all. I'm keeping my motion, so my acceleration will also be zero. So I can have acceleration as zero, both at rest and also in motion. If my acceleration, if I was at rest, my velocity was zero and I have no acceleration, I'm gonna stay at rest. But if I'm in motion with any velocity, but not zero, but with the same velocity over and over, and I also don't have acceleration, what's gonna happen? I'm gonna stay in motion, okay? With the same speed and same direction. So for Newton's first law, it's not the law that says I'm not moving. I can be moving, but I'm not accelerating, okay? Or I can be at rest, not moving at all. Okay, so uh, let's do some examples. For example, everyday application. Consider, for instance, the unfortunate collision of a car with a wall. What would happen to a person who is not using seatbelt? Why? Let's say you are in a car and you collide this car in a wall and you don't have your seatbelt. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? You go probably out from the car or probably you're going to get a really damage. Why? Because your body was was moving in that car. When you suddenly stops, your car tends to keep the movement. So you go away, you go from the car with the same velocity as the car was before. Okay, so here's an animation. So you, you are in this car. So this movement, you're gonna do with the same velocity that this car was moving. Let's say the car was 100 km per hour. Your body will be eject at 100 km per hour, per hour uh, also, okay? Because of the first law of inertia, your body tends to keep move, the same movement that you were before. Okay, that's why it's so, so important to use your seatbelt, okay? Now let's do another example. Consider, for instance, a ladder strapped to the top of a paint truck. So let's say you have a truck, and on the top has a letter. What would happen if the letter was negligently strapped to the truck in such a way that it was free to slide along the top of the truck? Let's say 
the person who put this letter on the top of the truck didn't uh, hold it properly, didn't uh, put it uh, hold it properly. What's going to happen if uh, this truck suddenly stops? What's going to happen to that letter? So, what's happened to that letter? Just go out with the same velocity that the truck was performing, right? Why? Because the letter tends to keep the same uh, velocity. If it was, for example, 100 km per hour, the letter will continue to move 100 km per hour when the truck stops. It's the same, the same logic of if it's you inside that car, okay? So, in the definition, Initia is the resistance of an object an object has to change its motion of a state of motion, its velocity. So every time you have a motion, you have some resistance to change that motion, it wants to keep that motion. Okay. So if you slide a book across a table and stops, what would happen? The book Emotion come to a rest position because of the presence of the force of friction. So let's say you are sliding a book across a table, but then you stop. What would happen? So the book emotion continue to move until the force of friction stops it. Okay? In the absence of a force of friction, the book would continue in motion with the same speed and direction. So let's say you give the book some movement so the book is sliding over the table if there is no force of friction at all what's gonna happen to that book it would continue moving right so what stops the book the force of friction so uh, i need a force to stop that moving okay so a force is required to keep a motion but a force is required to stop it, okay? So here, I'm a book moving. A book, as a book slides across a table from left to right, the force of friction acts on the book to slow it down and bring it to rest. So a force of friction acts against that movement. Okay, let's talk about mass and initial. So the tendency of an object to resist change in its state of motion varies with mass, okay? If I have a big mass, it's going to take more force for me to stop or less force? More force, right? So initia is like direct proportional to the mass. So mass is the quantity that suddenly depends upon the initia of an object. If I have bigger mass, I'm going to have bigger initia as well. So I have resist more resistance to change the state of motion. So the bigger my mass, the bigger my initia, and the bigger the resistance to change that state of motion. So here, if I have a 300 kilograms or a 30 kilograms, it's going to have much more initia in the 300 kilograms because it's proportional to the mass. Objects with greater mass have more initia. It takes more force to change their motion because the, the let's say these balls are stopped. For me to move them, I need to apply more force on that ball that's bigger, right? So the greater the mass, the greater the initia. So I need more force to move it, okay? Okay, let's remember what's balance force. Balance force is when all my resistant, resultant force is zero. So let's say here a book. I didn't change anything in the book, the book is on the table, that's it. Which force acts on this book? So I have the gravity, pulls downward at the book, and also another force acting against a book. We are going to talk about the second physics law, that is the law of reaction, okay, action and reaction. So for now, 
I have another uh, force acting to push upward on the book. How do I know that? Because if I have just gravity, the book will fall, will continue falling. How it's not falling? Because there is a force that's acting the book, acting on the book to keep them on that state. Okay? So, I say that the gravity that puts down makes the book to have a weight, not mass. Remember, weight. And this against force, like I said, the table on the book, I call them normal force. So, weight force push the book downward, okay? And I can calculate this force by multiplying the mass of the book by gravity. Remember, weight is different of mass. And the normal force, force that push the book upward. So I have this normal force pushing upward. Because my book stops, if it's not, it's not moving, for, it's not going up or down, it means my normal force is the same as my weight force. So my resultant force is zero. If my resultant force is zero, I say it has balance force. What does that mean? My book doesn't move it. Okay, it's stopped over there. It doesn't mean I don't have any force. It means my force are balanced. I have force act on the book. The only thing is that the resultant force act on this book has zero newton. So let's say another example. What are the force act on a person that remains stands on the over the floor? So here I have a person. Which force do I have here? So I have the gravity pulls down, and also the floor push up. Because if it I didn't have the floor, I would go down and down and down, continue to go down. But I have the floor, the floor that is like um, avoiding me to go down. So if I'm stops, I have the weight force and the normal force. So weight force downward and normal force upward. So I have my force. If I'm stops here, I'm not going up or down. My normal force is the same as my weight force. If it's the same, my resultant force is zero. Okay, so when I calculate the resultant force is zero, it means what? I'm not going up or down because my two forces are balanced. Okay, let's do an example now with unbalanced force. So unbalanced force is means my force is anything but zero. So, so my resultant force is zero. So let's do this example with me. Just, just analyze. My force here, my resultant force is zero or different of zero? Different of zero, right? Probably, unless the left guy is too strong, but my resultant force goes to the right, right? So my resultant force goes to the right. And my resultant force is, I don't know the, the number, I didn't give you any information for you to calculate, but I know is not zero. So this is unbalanced force, okay? When I have two force of different intensities in different directions. But this is not the first Newton law, okay? This is just an example for you to understand what's balanced force. Okay, let's do an example here. Now, in this book, I'm this book I have the gravity going down and the table pushes up. But this book is also trying to go to the left. But I have the force of friction acting against it. My force here is balanced or unbalanced? Unbalanced, right? Why? Because I have another force going to the left that is not balanced with any other force going to the right. So I have the weight force going down, the normal force going up, but also 
the friction force acts acting to the left. So it's slowing down my book. In this case, I have unbalanced force because I have these two here. So the normal force and the weight force, they balance each other. So the resultant force is zero. But I have this left force here. So I say, in this case, I have unbalanced force on the book. Okay, so you need to analyze each, each case. Okay, so in summary, what can I conclude? Balance force causes stationary objects, objects that are not moving, to remain at rest with acceleration of zero, so no acceleration at all. But balance force also causes moving objects to continue moving with, with the same speed and direction. So balance force, I have two situations. I, my object that was stopped is not moving, continue not moving, continue at rest, or if my object was moving, it will continue moving, but with the same speed and direction. So I have, in this also in this case, no acceleration. So you have, I have balance force, I have no acceleration, either if the object is not moving or moving. But when I have unbalanced force, cause moving objects to change how they are moving. So they accelerate. So they're gonna get an acceleration, but not zero, okay? It means I'm gonna change my velocity. If it was, for example, velocity zero, it's gonna be five or 100 kilometers per hour, I don't know. But I'm gonna change my velocity. If I was moving, I mean, can increase my velocity or decrease my velocity. If it wasn't moving, I can increase it by leaving my state of rest. Okay, so that's it for first Newton's law. Please do the exercise for you to practice this concept a little bit more. Okay, thank you so much, guys.